luxury. It's a play for more money, and it's a play after a certain niche of the marketplace. Every automaker wants to go after it, but once they've hit it, there's always those ones that want to go a step further. This year, we've seen how Toyota wants to go one step further with its crown empire. Lexus is luxury king, but can Toyota go even higher? The new Crown SUV is showcasing to us they can, and they can go after one of the most vital marketplaces in the world right now, utility vehicles. CUVs and SUVs are king, and companies like Bentley, Rolls-Royce, and Maybach see this marketplace and see the money that can be made, but so are companies like Lexus, Range Rover, G Honky, GAC. They're all seeing this marketplace for what it could be and how much more money they can make off their standard products. Today, Autolux is going to be taking a look at high-end SUVs, the biggest products on the marketplace, turning the biggest profits in the marketplace. <laughs> Welcome back to the Outlooks Podcast. I am your host, as always, the doctor to the automotive industry, Mr. Everett J, coming to you from our main host website at autolooks.net. If you haven't been there, stop by, check it out and read some of our reviews, check out some of our ratings, and find more of our podcasts all in one place at the autolooks.net website. The Autolux Podcast is brought to you by Ecom Entertainment Group and distributed by podbeam.com. If you'd like to get in touch with us, send us an email over at email at autolooks.net. So like I said in the beginning of this podcast, high-end SUVs, there's one of those things that can be one of the greatest money makers for any automotive company out there. And a lot of major auto companies know this. And SUVs are already big money for everybody else. With General Motors and Ford both ditching sedans in the North American marketplace completely and even globally and focusing only on crossover utility market and sport utility market. With this growing presence and it's in fact that in Europe, just as past week alone they've proven that nearly 50 percent of the marketplace is now held by utility vehicles so it's no wonder that some of the greatest and most luxurious auto manufacturers out there are getting into this marketplace with the release of both the bentley bentenga the rolls royce cullinan a lot of new players are starting to look at this marketplace and say hey we want to make some money on premier and high-end automotive sales Range Rover is one of the, the original names when it came to luxury off-roading. Yes, the original Range Rover wasn't built for the luxury marketplace. It was built for the farming marketplace, by all means. Farmers who already used the Land Rover Defenders to get around their property wanted something a little bit more comfortable than the base model Defender built off the original Jeep platform to go around their backwoods. They wanted something a little more luxurious, something more comfortable, and something with a few more features in it where they can go out to the field and go for a night on the town. Well, this was the original Range Rover product from Land Rover. It gave a little more luxury to the utility marketplace. Not something new considering the fact that Jeep had already done this with the Wagoneer model when it was released in the 1960s. Yes, the Wagoneer essentially started the luxury chain for the utility marketplace. And with that, new interest. Now, by the end of the 1970s, lots of people were starting to get into the utility marketplace, but not a lot of people were looking at the luxury market of it. Companies like Cadillac, Lincoln, and even Chrysler weren't even considering the luxury marketplace. With only Rolls-Royce and Bentley releasing their own all-wheel drive versions of their sedans and custom-built products for rich oil sheiks in the Middle East, the main consuming public was not allowed these products. So the SUV market marketplace in the premier and high-end territory was still not accounted for. Although Bentley and Rolls-Royce were the only players in this marketplace. You have to remember the premier and high-end marketplaces existed at the beginning of the automobile industry. They teetered off by the fall of the depression. Some of them managed to stick around with the imperial nameplate from Chrysler and the continental nameplate from Lincoln. They managed to hold on to a more upper echelon of the luxury world, but not pure 
Sportster premier and high end. And with that, the luxury SUV marketplace never really took off. You have to remember, the SUV marketplace really didn't have its forefront into the automotive marketplace until 1996. Yeah, mid-90s. The Grand Cherokee, the Cherokee, the Bronco, the Explorer, they were all still there, but they were not big. And people weren't looking at all-wheel drive. So if the regular consumer wasn't looking at all-wheel drive, the luxury consumer didn't care whatsoever. If they need to go into the backwoods, well, they can always just get a Land Rover or a Grand Cherokee to get in there. It's luxury, right? But it doesn't have the same luxury appeal as the Rolls-Royce and Bentley. And by the early 2000s, a few of these luxury marks, Cadillac, to be one of the first, along with Lincoln, showcased to us the both Navigator and Escalade products, showcasing that luxury was here into the SUV marketplace. And with the SUV marketplace blowing up in the early 2000s, everybody wanted a piece of that. Soon, Lexus was releasing the LX version of the Land Cruiser. Chrysler waited a long time to get into the party with the Aspen, but BMW hopped right in with the X5 and Mercedes with the M-Class. Everybody was getting in at the ground floor of luxury, but with more and more luxury people looking at this, I want to go deeper into the bush. Sultans from the Middle East, kings and queens from the Europe, and billionaires from the North American marketplace wanted to explore the world. They wanted to see it, but they wanted to see it in the same creature comforts they cruised around Fifth Avenue in New York. They want to roll into the middle of the bush in a Rolls Royce. They want that comfort level. They want that tailored ability to be added to an off-road vehicle. Well, with the Volkswagen Group having a platform already ready for it, utilizing the Q7 Touareg platform and extending upon it, the Bentley Bentenga was built, along with its brethren, the Audi Q8 and Yures. Yes, Bentley was moving in to the ultra-luxury world. But they weren't the first to this marketplace. Land Rover saw the writing on the wall years before everybody else. When people were asking Bugatti if they would ever get into this marketplace because it was growing, they said there was a possibility. But you have to remember, long before they even considered looking at an SUV, they looked at building the Galloper sedan, an ultra high-end luxury sedan to go up against the likes of the Rolls-Royce Phantom, the Bentley Mulsanne, and the Maybach 62. Sedans were still king when it came to the ultra luxurious population of the world. They didn't care about going into the backwoods on their own. These were this ultra rich people. They could be flown into the backwoods, hop in a quad and go wherever they wanted. They could drop a Mercedes G class in the middle of nowhere to go explore the back next of the woods. And then came along Range Rover. And two people, one, a previous Spice Girl, and two, one of the most world-famous soccer players. Yes, I've been talking about the Beckhams. And Victoria Beckham became a big voice for the Land Rover nameplate. Not more so the Range Rover nameplate, but Land Rover as in general. Helping push the Evoque and the Velar out into the luxury SUV marketplace, Range Rover said they are top-tier people. And Bentley is now looking at getting into the off-road marketplace. They want to build a new vehicle for the queen to go into the backwoods well, we can't allow them to do this so range rover took a page from both rolls royce and bentley and perfectly tailored pure high-end luxury into their standard range rover product it built the autobiography platform and with it came a brand new premier luxury product into the automotive world premier this wasn't just your standard range rover sure the queen of england cruised around on a range Range Rover already, but the Range Rover was also driven by millionaires around the world. These are not the same people on the same scale as a world leader. They wanted something different. With the rise of the SUV, Range Rover did it. They said, here is our performance brand. Here is our standard brand. And here is the top of the luxury food chain for the SUV marketplace. This makes an Escalade look like a fucking Hyundai in the luxury world. But Range Rover wasn't a high-end brand. So the autobiography models never took off in the, the way that Jaguar Land Rover Group had originally thought they would. They thought this vehicle would bring in more money and more consumers, but it didn't. But soon enough, Bentley and Rolls-Royce would showcase to the world what off-roading luxury was all about. 
Taking a page from their own history books, Bentley and Rolls-Royce had built products for Middle Eastern sheiks between the 70s and 80s to go off-roading in sand dunes. They already understood the all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive systems. They never implemented them into any of their vehicles because there was no need for it. Everybody drove their sedans in the city. Rich Middle Eastern sheiks like to go sand dune racing. They like to go off the beaten path and into the wilderness. And they wanted to do this in the same creature comforts that they were used to. They were tired of doing this in G classes and Range Rovers. They wanted something better. They wanted something more luxurious and more refined towards their taste buds. And they wanted to do it with the brands that they loved the most. Bentley, Rolls Royce, and Maybach. Now, Maybach essentially beat Bentley and Rolls-Royce to the mark, releasing the Mercedes G-Class Maybach Landoule, a convertible, pure luxury version of the G-Class for the market. But Maybach was only a sub-brand to Mercedes. It was not a dedicated, high-end brand, similar to that of Bentley and Rolls-Royce. It was just a sub-brand. Sure, they were a lot more luxurious than your standard Mercedes products. When you rolled up in a Maybach, people knew you had money, and you loved the world's best creature comforts in your vehicle. Huh. You can get that with the Rolls-Royce or Bentley for the same amount of money. And now that the SUV world had caught them, and people were seeing how much money Rolls-Royce and Bentley were making, hell, Bentley gave gave the first Bentenga off the production line to the Queen of England, Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth. Rolls-Royce sent a few to the Middle East. They were both experiencing what they could do in the off-road luxury world. But unfortunately, Bentley's was built off the unibody platform that underpinned both the Q8 and the Yaris, where Rolls-Royce was still using the ladder frame underpinning the Phantom. So essentially, the Cullinan was more of an SUV, where the Bentenga was more of a CUV. Both can go into the woods, but only one can go a little deeper and survive more of that rugged back roads. But unfortunately, a full-scale four-wheel drive system, along with the massive amount of ground clearance that people require in the back woods, was not available in either model. So these essentially were just lifted station wagons from luxury marks. Well, the things were changing. Range Rover had built the autobiography, and they were still producing them because people were still looking at them. They weren't selling on the scale that the Bentangas and Cullinans were selling, but they can go further into the woods. Maybach had the GLSs, which meant they can go further into the bush. But along from China, one of the most growing marketplaces in the world, and their top-tier luxury mark, Hong Ki, says, we are getting into this market. And they don't just do it onesie twosie. No, they go all in with the LS3, the LS5, and now the LS7, and even LS9. They're going after the premier marketplace for luxury. Not tailored as much as Bentley, Rolls Royce, and even some Maybox, but they're getting in there. They're showcasing to people the luxury is built for world leaders. And even world leaders need to get into the backwoods. But China is a growing country with massive amounts of infrastructure and all on a backwood spaces. We're not going to go see their leader going through the Gobi Desert in an LS9, are we? No, no. But if you go to a country just north of them, you will. If you've listened to our podcast about Oris Automobiles, you'll understand this next vehicle. Oris Automobiles was commissioned by the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. He got tired of rolling around in German and American built vehicles. He got tired of luxury brands from everywhere else in the world. He wanted his home grow own company. Now, as we talked about in our podcast, there is still one great nation that does not have a car company dedicated and built in their own home country for their world leader, and that's Canada. But in Russia, they now have Oris. Now, their Senate sedan looks a lot like a Rolls-Royce Phantom. But when they sent out to build this company, they wanted to build everything to get their global leader around. And since their global leader likes to go into the middle of Siberia to go hunting to his backwoods, he can't do that in a standard sedan. And he can't do that with a standard Rolls-Royce Cullinan or even a Bentley Bentanga. Hell, the Range Rover autobiography would even have trouble getting into there. So Oris, after building their sedan, building their four-door convertible for the army, building their vans, and now working on 
motorcycles that released the Commandant. A full-scale, full SUV built in premier luxury fashion to get you from downtown Moscow to the middle of Siberia. It can take you where there are no roads. And it can do it in the same luxurious fashion that you're used to with all other Oris products. They saw a luxury market. Their only issue is the fact that they invaded Ukraine and now nobody can buy their vehicles. Well, except in maybe India or China. So Oris is having a bad go at it, going after the top markets in the world for high-end and premium luxury products. But it's still there. And it's still a product that can go way out into the bush. It's the one that can do more than anyone else. High-end and premier luxury is a growing market. And it's been around for a long time. Spiker looked at this long before the Bentanga ever hit the market when they did their C8 Peking to Paris concept vehicle. Essentially an active lifestyle vehicle, this was built in Spiker fashion and Spiker luxury to get you from Peking, China all the way to Paris without having to worry about how bad the roads got, but still give you the same comfort levels that you were used to with driving their C8 ailerons. Conquest from Canada. Yeah, Canada you may not know this build some of the best and most known of military inspired bomb proof vehicles that you can find with both conquest and Teradyne residing in my home country of Canada, Teradyne from Winnipeg, and Conquest from Toronto. The Conquest Evade can be had with the same luxury factor as a Rolls-Royce in a bomb-proof vehicle. Huh. This is nothing new considering the fact that from Latvia, you get darts with their prom bomb. If you haven't seen this thing, this thing is ultra luxurious. Hell, you can get a whale penis. Not, not, not making that up. Whale penis for your interior of this vehicle. They go all out on luxury with the darts but it is built for war-torn nations so you can roll around in luxury comforts inside but still be safe on the exterior so it may not look the same luxurious factor as a Maybach or a Rolls but their feel on the inside is and the way you can customize it is the exact same huh the Americans aren't going to stand by and let, you know, Canadians, Latvians, hell, even the British and Chinese get away with this. No, 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 no. In the U.S., we now have our own creature comfort exotic SUV builder with Resvani. Yeah, you remember the Beast? An amazing looking little supercar? Well, building off of a Jeep platform and now an Escalade platform, the Resvani Vengeance and Resvani Tank can give you the luxury factor of a premier automobile with the bulletproof military look that you want. Luxury is there and luxury is king. People want more and asking for more is what these car companies are giving us. Range Rover has now released their Vogue edition. Where the autobiography was supposed to go after the high-end marketplace, the Vogue is supposed to go after more of the premier market place. VinFast released their president edition of their original SUV, which they plan to give to the government officials of Vietnam. Beijing Automotive Corporation with their Stone 01. Tank China. Yes, Tank Automobiles is now looking at going after the luxury field. Now, they haven't moved into premier and high-end SUVs, but they are looking to get in there. Yang Wang, on the other hand, is on the cusp between luxury and premier in its market field. Until it gets that customizable ability it won't make it there. The closest thing you can find from an Asian marketplace to go up against the likes of Rolls-Royce, Bentley, Maybach, hell, even Darts and Conquest would be the Toyota Century SUV. The Century nameplate was built for the President of Japan and the Emperor themselves. The Century has always been used to chauffeur around the Emperor of Japan. Unless he's cruising around in his own homemade Prince Motors GTR. The Emperor loves to use Century. And Century is a nameplate from Toyota that's been around for so long and has always skewed a premier and high-end luxury stance into the world. They rise above the Lexus branding. And now with this new Century SUV... Toyota is considering bringing the crown nameplate 
for their ultra, ultra luxury feel with Crown Sedans, the Crown Century SUV, and Crown Century Sedan. Toyota is looking towards the future of being able to make more money off their products. The Century SUV has more hours into it for fit, finish, and review than anything else from the Toyota product stable. It rides in the same lineups that Rolls-Royce gives to their own vehicles. Why is Toyota doing this? Because CUVs and SUVs make lots of money. A lot more money than your sedans. You have to sell a lot of Corollas to get the same beneficial factor that you get from selling one Century SUV. And even though there's so many hours put into the vehicle, the cost in the end is a win-win and Toyota sees that. But why aren't the other marks doing this? Stellantis owns Chrysler, which now means they own the Imperial nameplate. Lincoln has the Continental nameplate. Cadillac and General Motors still own the LaSalle nameplate. Hell, even the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. And then you get the likes of Bugatti. Where are these car companies and why haven't they entered the high-end SUV marketplace? Same reason why Aston Martin hasn't brought back the Lagonda nameplate. Because until the world gets back onto its feet, the high-end and premier marketplace can be fickle. And with the downfall of the Chinese marketplace this year, we're starting to see a turn in the top tables. And with Bugatti now being in the same stable as Rimac, their focus is primarily on their next hypercar. Cadillac, Lincoln, and Chrysler. Well, Chrysler is pretty much a dead-in-the-water product stable. But with the likes of Maserati, Atlantia as well, and DS, you want wonder why they're not going to try and go after this. Aston Martin with Lagonda, they've been playing around with the idea for years, but have never pulled the pin on going all in. But with Aston Martin being a small, privately, partially Canadian-owned company, they can't get the financing to get into there. And why doesn't General Motors and Ford bring back the Continental and LaSalle nameplates to get into there? Well, high-end and premier was something that left the North American marketplace decades ago. With the loss of Pierce Arrow and Duesenberg. There's been no major high end. But with the rise of Lucid Motors, the high end luxury SUV may soon be on its way. The gravity may not be the main luxury point into the premier luxury SUV marketplace from America, but it's the stepping stone for ultimate luxury in the American marketplace. Lucid can be the key to unlocking premier SUVs in America. Until then, we're just going to have to keep buying from the British, the German, and they really get shot down and told to F off in the country they invaded. Maybe you yeah, might see an Aorus on our stables as well. But until those days, we're stuck with the high-end SUVs we currently have. High-end SUVs are going to be here for quite a while. And as the SUV marketplace is not showing any signs of slowing down, and now with the addition of active lifestyle vehicles giving you the trifecta of the utility marketplace, there will be no slowdown for the growth and potential of the premier and high-end SUV marketplace. Its future has not been unleashed yet. Bentley and Rolls-Royce were just the beginning. There's a lot more to come from this great market and more products with personalized factor coming to you in the next decade. Jeep is the key for Stellantis and the new Wagoneer nameplate is going to be the bridge between luxury and high-end. So, Rolls-Royce and Bentley may have owned the market for premier and high-end products globally for the past 60 years, but that's all going to come crashing down in the next 10, or as we see new marks and new products arrive in the high-end and premier marketplace. There is a growth potential here, and one that nobody has taken part of yet. So do we need more high-end SUVs in this marketplace? Yes, there's major growth potential with Lagonda, Continental, Imperial, LaSalle, Tank, Yangwang, Bugatti. There is unlimited potential for growth in this marketplace. And with the rise of more billionaires every year, there's going to become more of a need for these high-end SUVs as billionaires want to get away from people even more. And with a lot of these smaller marks like Rolls-Royce Bentley controlling the amount of production they put out to keep their exclusivity with a growing market, you're going to need more competition. And that is where the Century SUV comes into play. It does have a place in the market of the future. And the Century SUV is the key. 
So if you like this podcast, please like, share, or comment about it on any of the social feeds or media sites that you found us on, from Facebook to Twitter to Instagram and even LinkedIn. Share, tell us about what you think about the high-end and premier marketplaces for SUVs into the world. Tell us what you think is your favorite from this marketplace and check out our website for some of the vehicles that we've talked about but you've never even seen that have a potential to arriving on our shores. With companies like Coing say mclaren and bugatti even considering getting into this marketplace the potential for amazing products of the future is unlimited so drop us a line and click that like button at the bottom on any of the major social feeds or streaming sites that you found the autolux podcast on the Autolux Podcast has been brought to you by Ecom Entertainment Group and distributed by Podbeam.com. If you'd like to get in touch with either the Autolux Ecom Podbeam team or even the doctor to the automotive industry, Mr. Everett J. himself, send us an email over at email at Autolux.net. So for myself, Everett J., the Autolux website, and Ecom Entertainment Group, strap yourself in for this one comforting ride that the high-end SUV marketplace will take us on. I'm not going to do that.